Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Pivotal Moments with Lilita. So as you know, we talk about those moments of having to pivot, and we all can agree that 2020 has been very crazy, and all of us have had to pivot in some way or the other. But I'm sure we would agree that nothing is more stressful than planning a wedding and having to pivot because we are in the middle of a global pandemic. So I am super excited to have this couple on the episode today talking about how they pivoted and still had an amazing wedding during a major pandemic. So let's get right into the conversation. Welcome Crystal and Darren to Pivotal Moments with Lolita. (laughs) So thank you for joining me and yeah, let's get right into the conversation. So normally, I asked people to tell me about a time when you had to pivot, but we are talking about your amazing wedding. So why don't you just kind of start talking about what that was like, why you made the decision to, to still go ahead with it and, you know, share, share a little bit about that. Sure. So um, I'll start and hopefully I won't start crying. I'm a bit of a crier. <laughs> but, um, so we had gotten engaged in december of 2018 um and we were already on an 18 month plan right for a plan for the wedding because we was like you know we just want to take our time make sure that we do everything that we want to do um be able to invite all the people that we want to invite and give them time to plan um and so when we entered january 2020 we were like super excited because it was like oh my god it's finally almost here um and then COVID 19 hit so of course (laughs) we were nervous Mm -hmm. um because everything is so uncertain so you know watching the news of course didn't make it any better because we didn't have any kind of plan in place as a nation as to how we were going to combat this virus um we got to the point where my job i work in an office near wall street and they basically told us like okay we're going to start working from home uh 100 remote don't come into the office like you won't be able to get in that type of stuff so then i was like oh my god they have told us that we can't come into the office so what does that mean for us when it comes to planning this wedding and what are we going to do and then on top of that we of course have family and friends who are hitting us up and they're like so what y'all gonna do <laughs> you know what y'all gonna do oh my gosh this is scary like they don't know how to contain it so how are you still gonna have your wedding and you know and then we had a lot of family members who are elderly who mm-hmm. would be in attendance and we wanted them to be there so we were really concerned about what that meant um so we were like you know what we're just gonna wait until may 20th which would have been a month away from our original wedding date Mm -hmm. and we said we will make a decision then um so this was like march when we said that and Mm -hmm. i panicked the whole way of course i panicked the way (laughs) the whole way I like would have weeks where I would just be like super manic about everything. And then I'm looking at him like, why aren't you having it? Why don't you have any anxiety about this (laughs) by myself? You know, it was just completely dramatic. Like I'm the total opposite. I was calm, cool. In my mind, I was like, well, either way it's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to happen. Yeah. Somehow there's going to be a wedding and somehow somebody is going to do something for us that would be, even if it's just us doing something for ourselves to make it special. Yeah. And, but, oh, why, why this and why that? And you have no emotion and you don't know. Ah, I was like, well, that's just me. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the interesting thing about it. So, you know, even without it being a pandemic, right? Weddings are stressful anyway. Like this is common, you know, with the 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 bride and groom to be anyway, right? Normally the bride is like super stressed and the groom is like, everything's gonna be fine, I don't care. <laughs> so uh, it's already a stressful time. And then to add this onto it, I really can't imagine what that was like. <clears throat> and also 
as you mentioned where you work, so you all were in what at one point was considered a hotspot, right? Yes. Yes, we were in the hotspot. And like living through that and watching how quickly it spread was probably the scariest thing that I have experienced to date. Like we were at work and we watched it go from one man in New Rochelle having the the symptoms to his entire household to the next day it was then 13 cases the next day it was then 30 yeah it was in 30 cases and then next thing you know it was like the entire building like it spread like it was it was insane to watch it happen and not know what to do because again we're in New York City so we're taking well I'm taking the subway Oh which is damn packed, you know, during, during rush hour, there are days when I can't find a seat. There are days when I got to, you know, stand so close to the window that I might as well be on the outside of it. Like, yeah. it, it was just, it was really crazy. I am considered an essential worker. So I was going out every day and like I worked through this whole pandemic. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> it's to May and you decide that, what, well, what do you decide at that point? Um, at that point, we started looking at our options. So we were, we luckily we had an event planner, a wedding planner who has been with us throughout this, in, well, almost the entire process. And we were speaking with her about, okay, well, what are our other date options? Because again, we don't know what's going to happen. Now, keep in mind, um, our venue and our event planner, they were just kind of like, you know, just wait till closer to date to see what happens. And the way my anxiety is set up, I can't do that. I'll tell so you. I, I need to know what my options are. So we actually mm. looked at a date for September. Okay. Um, and, you know, there was a date open. And so what we did was we sent out a poll. We sent out a text message to a couple of friends and family and was like, hey, if we pushed our wedding back to September, um, you know, because we want to, we want to make sure that you are safe and comfortable and all of those things. If we push our wedding back to September, would you be comfortable with that? Would you attend or would you still be afraid? And, you know, people were honest with us. And well, some people said they would come. Some, some people said right. they wouldn't come. Yeah. Right. Um, but we didn't want to jeopardize anyone's health. You know, so we just said, you know, we'll just not do it and wait till next year. But it still happened this year. <laughs> right. So we sent out a, after we, you know, got everyone's opinion and um, I threw a couple tantrums. Yeah. <laughs> <And> <laughs> we, okay. So I just put together another text message to send out to all of our guests. That was another. That was another situation. Like we didn't have people's email addresses. We only had to check their cell phone numbers. So it was like we yeah. had text messages. Um, and so we sent out a message to let everyone know that we decided to wait mm-hmm. until next year to have a big ceremony um because we of course as we said we wanted to keep everyone's safety in mind um but we were going to go ahead and have our wedding um this year in brooklyn in our backyard and people were like okay and we we said we'll set up a zoom if you would attend if you want to attend online Mm -hmm. please do so um and people just kind of rocked with it Wow. Wow. And it was beautiful. I will have these pictures showing so that people can see just how beautiful this was. So you definitely pivoted, right? I mean, that was huge. And I know even just talking about it probably still doesn't even capture the just amount of stress and anxiety and emotion. But something that I know you had mentioned before that, and and that's really what we talk about in pivotal moments is that thing that's so important that we don't change that is is unchangeable and we make the adjustments around that and it sounds like getting sticking to getting married this year was that thing that was important to you all so can you talk about why did you know no matter what you were going to get married this year (laughs) well um as a lot of people say we always say it um love doesn't wait Mm. You know, love can't wait so we did we wanted to continue with our wedding we want to continue with our love and our blessings so we decided to go ahead and do it like even if we had three people here it would have been the same for us because you know family is definitely very important to both of us yeah so we just decided you know we're gonna get married everybody's doing zoom 
everybody might be zoomed out. You can get it. You've been school zoom, work zoom, friend zoom, happy hour zoom, party zoom. But you know, we decided like that was something that we wanted to do, and it turned out great. Yeah, it did. We had a list of 100 and it was over 150 people, people that logged in. Wow, wow. That is beautiful. And and it's a, it's really a testimony to love, not just between the two of you, but just the support, the friends, the family. What what an amazing testimony to that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and so, it, was, it was, you know, a couple of other things that it was centered around too. Like we definitely, as we said, we we wanted to do it because love couldn't wait. And it was something that we wanted to do. Like, as I said, we had already waited 18 months to do this. And, you know, as a young couple, we were like, we're ready to move on to other things, right? Yeah, yeah. We're ready to build this life together um, and become one. And then we also wanted to make sure that all of our loved ones were safe, right? So we wanted to do something where they felt safe, but still felt included in yeah. what it we were doing um and then the third thing was that um we had pretty much paid for like 90 percent of so it was like we could not get that money back we couldn't get anything back so we still had to we still wanted to move forward with getting married this year as we planned um, and then next year, we'll just have a one-year anniversary party that includes everyone yeah. <laughs> to, um, and celebrate together. So we just wanted to make sure we maximized our investment because if we had gone ahead and done it in September, yeah, um, those people that said they weren't comfortable, they weren't coming. So, And with the way that things are going right now, it doesn't look like it's going to clear up by September. So we had to make sure that we maximized our investment in this by making sure that we put it far out enough that people would feel comfortable with coming and it wouldn't feel like we just lost money because right. we got half the amount of guests that we were originally going to have. Yeah, yeah. Now, normally I also talk about the difference between pivoting and adjusting <clears throat> and how adjustment really is adapting to something. So it kind of takes on a little different tone. So can you say throughout this process, times where you felt like you just had to make an adjustment, this wasn't a pivot, this wasn't circled around a, a certain important thing, but you just had to, you know, make an adjustment, adapt and go with it. Um, yeah, so the adjustment for me personally, um, I really wanted my grandmother to be at my wedding. So she has two sons, and I'm technically her third son. Like, she doesn't have a grandchild. So, you know, with the pandemic, I was really concerned about her health and her well-being. So we decided, when we decided to do something small, we said, you know, we're going to keep it really intimate and only have maybe, what, six to six. eight people here. Yeah. And for me, it was like, if she wasn't going to be there, then nobody would be there. Aww. We had to make the adjustments of, you know, who we're going to pick, who do we trust to have in the house, to have, you know, in her space to where she's comfortable, we're comfortable, and, you know, we don't really expose her, you know, to the virus. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And for me, um, it was two things. Number one, for me, it was, it was hard for me to adjust to the fact that my father wasn't going to be there to walk me down the aisle. Mm. Um, Aaron will tell you like whenever we talked about wedding planning and everything I was like you know I mean one thing I know for sure <laughs> is that James Butler <laughs> is walking me down that aisle and he yeah. me away mm -hmm. and so it I wrestled with that for a long time right. that my father could not be there and he could not physically walk me down the aisle mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing that I struggled with too was that I didn't have my squad there. So I didn't have my girls. Uh, my then fiance, now husband, is the person that helped me get dressed. So it wasn't like that big reveal moment. He was yeah. like everything from the spanks to the shoes. <laughs> I get it all. Right? <laughs> Ear necklace. Earrings, necklace. Hairpin. Yes. Whatever. He had to make sure my hair was right during the photo shoot. Like it and we was, did a photo shoot. Yes, we did. Before a, the wedding. We did a photo shoot that day before yeah. the wedding. So it was an adjustment. It wasn't the traditional thing that you envision, 
but you know it was beautiful in, yeah. in itself like it was time for us to bond and like really get prepared and ready for this moment together Mm, mm, mm. wow that is so so beautiful and so touching wow well as we come to the end of our conversation what message do you want to say directly to people after this major pivot that you all had to do for your wedding what do you want to say to our viewers um there's two things so one no matter how far ahead you plan you never know what's going to happen so I would say one, always have a backup plan mm. just in case, you know, there's some, a pandemic, you know what I mean? So <laughs> have a backup plan yeah. and two, purchase wedding insurance. Yes. Wow. Okay. So a lot of them, when we got engaged, you know, I didn't know if she was actually a wedding planner before. Yeah. So I <laughs> never knew they offered wedding insurance. So you can spend maybe two, three, four hundred bucks, and if anything goes wrong, it's covered, and you'll get your money back. As you heard, we're not getting anything back. Wow. And then we tried to purchase insurance, and it just couldn't happen because everybody just stopped because of the pandemic. Because yeah. they knew, okay, we give this out, people are just going to want money back. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. have a backup plan, get insurance. Wow. Yep. That's great tips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely um, one other thing too um just to add to that for the bride um find your tribe you know it doesn't have to necessarily be just your bridesmaids like there are so many facebook groups instagram groups and things like that that are dedicated to uh people that are getting married brides grooms all those things like those are people that you can bounce your ideas off of when it gets frustrating you have someone to talk to that completely understands what it is that you're going through um and that is willing to be that ear even if you just want to rant yeah. you know they are willing to do that so just find your tribe um because there are hundreds if not millions of people that are going through the same process as you mm -hmm. yeah the last thing <laughs> fellas Listen to the woman. Listen to the woman. I kid you not. 91, 92% of the time, she's always right. And then I have to double back and be like, damn, she was right. So. See if we could edit that to have that repeat a few times. <laughs> like a little rap back. Exactly. Yeah. Like. I am so happy that he finally admits it and says it because this man had me thinking I was crazy. He had me thinking I was crazy. Because he's, you know, like you said, he's real chill and relaxed. That's him in life. And I was looking at him like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> yes. So, good advice, babe. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thank you both for taking time to talk about your experience. Once again, congratulations. It, like I said, planning a wedding is, is, is hard enough. And then to do it with so much that was going on, that's going on in the world and, and what was going on for you all, hats off to you. And I wish you nothing but so much success and love and blessings on your your marriage and beyond. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you so much. much. We appreciate it. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, you all have been watching another amazing episode of Pivotal Moments with Lolita. I'm sure you have been just as tickled and excited to hear their story of the pivotal moment that they experienced with their wedding. So as always, be sure to tune in next time for another wonderful episode of Pivotal Moments with Lolita.